Good evening, everybody. How you doing? How you doing tonight? Um, we are here to continue in our Bible study. We're here tonight for New Calvary Baptist Church Bible study as we share uh, in this Living with a Limp Bible study series as we continue talking about how we manage the circumstances of life. I am Senior Pastor William Marcus Small of the New Calvary Baptist Church. We are just so delighted and glad that you are sharing with us tonight. We hope and pray uh, that you have had a wonderful day. We hope that God has blessed you and God is continuing to keep you and that this becomes a wonderful conclusion to your evening as into your day as you continue uh, to move forward and see what God has in store for you. Just want to shout out everyone on Zoom uh, as we share tonight in our Zoom family and our Facebook Live family, those of you uh, who are already on and those who you are yet signing on, we hope and pray uh, that God is blessing you with this wonderful, awesome day. Um, we uh, are here uh, to discuss and talk about uh, as we continue, we're going to talk about living with the limp of the blues, how we deal with depression, how we deal with being depressed in our journey. So every now and then somebody knows what it is to have the blues. And so we're going to talk about uh, the various, various levels of um, what it is to be uh, in depressed or be depressed and have the blues every now and then. Uh, and we are just hope and pray that something happens. We hope and pray that this whole series has been a blessing to you in some way, shape, or form, and that you, it has benefited you uh, in some way. Um, we're going to begin, we're going to have a word of prayer, and we're just going to get started, get right into it, because we got a lot to cover tonight, okay? So let's just go ahead and go forward. God, we love you, and we're grateful for this time together. We ask that you just continue to bless us, watch over us, and keep us even in these moments. Uh, pour into us, God, that we might hear from you, that we might be encouraged, that we might, in all things, be reminded just how awesome and how wonderful and how great you are, that we pray for those who are yet uh, to sign on, those who are coming on. We pray for those who, uh, for whatever reason, can't share tonight, and we pray that they might be able to replay this, and it might be a blessing to not only them, but to loved ones and others who they are concerned about and concerned with and who want just to understand a little bit closer what you have in store for them. So right now, be with all of us and keep us and we give you glory. We give you honor in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. 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 So listen, uh, let's just get right to it. Um, as we talk about this thing, um, I knew it was going to be, I know what I said last week, um, when I listened to it, I said disappointment. Uh, I know I said living with limp disappointment, but the reality is that we had already did that. Uh, so my language was a little messed up. I did mean depression, um, but what it is to be depressed and what it is to live with the blues. Uh, but uh, so we're going to go forward. And when I started putting that out there uh, in terms of depression, I knew that there were some people that are going to be a little sketchy about it. There's some people who are going to be a little bit um, squirmish and squ squeamish about this topic because it is because of all of the kind of stigmas it has and because of all of the things that people assume and people think uh, when it comes to the blues and living with a sense of depression. But hopefully we lift some of that. Hopefully we educate tonight. Hopefully we ultimately talk about uh, how we deal with this in spirit and how we deal with it faithfully. So I hope and pray that this is helpful to you. Um, how many of you, if I were to ask you uh, just to drop uh, in the comment section real quick, your favorite Saturday morning or your favorite cartoon character growing up, which would it be? Would it be Bugs Bunny? Would it be... Um, you know, Mickey Mouse, would it be Minnie Mouse? Which which one would it be? Um, some of you are old enough to remember Woody Woodpecker and some of those uh, things that go on. Some of you remember the uh, Smurfs, things of that nature. Sometimes, uh, okay, even the Flintstones. Uh, what, what, what characters talk to you uh, when you understand 
um, when you talk about your Saturday morning dreams. Some of you are super friends people uh, like me. You remember the super friends and being in contact, sitting in front of the TV with your super friends on, uh, uh, eating your cereal on Saturday morning. What cartoon characters identify? Maybe it wasn't a cartoon character. Maybe it was something on the electric company or Sesame Street. Maybe it was Bert and Ernie. Maybe it was Grover. Maybe you were Oscar the Grouch and you know you identified in some way with it. Uh, but many of us have grown up and watched all kinds of different kinds of television characters uh, over the years. We have seen those. Uh, we talked about Mickey Mouse. We talked about Woody. We've talked about uh, Chili Willie the Penguin, you've talked about Goofy and all the rest of them, all of those different kinds of personalities. And you need to know it wasn't an accident the way they're created. They are created with personalities so we could grow up understanding the various kinds of people. And one of the people, one of the characters that many of us remember uh, is Winnie the Pooh. Uh, some of you remember Winnie the Pooh. Uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, was a fictional bear who uh, had a human friend named Christopher Robin. And one of the th friends, uh, the many friends that Winnie the Pooh had, uh, two that most stand out is Tigger, uh, the jumping tiger that everybody remembers who just had so much life. But the other friend that I remember distinctly in the Winnie the Pooh series was a character by the name of Eeyore. Eeyore's personality was sad. He had a pessimistic outlook on life. Eeyore, nothing seemed to work for him. Eeyore operated from a dim and kind of a dark outlook on life. Um, Eeyore, uh, character had a tail that was pinned on his back and he was unhappy about his tail because he was always afraid of losing it but he just chalked it up as a lot as his lot in life he just chalked it up as the way things were that his tail was pinned on him he had this pink ribbon if you remember that he used to, was quite fond of but he was always afraid he was anxious about losing and worried about losing his ribbon because it was tied to his tail and if his tail came off he would lose his beloved ribbon eeyore had a lot of things going on but he lacked confidence confidence in himself. And he always wanted to be confident and he always wanted to support his friends and whatever the situation was. But Eeyore always felt unworthy. He always felt like he did not uh, contribute much to a situation or to a circumstance. And his self-worth, his worth, his feeling of self-worth was always rooted in other people. Um, and his acceptance was always based upon wanting his friends to be around him at any given moment. Uh, and I ask the question tonight as we start off, as we talk about the blues, because Eeyore was one who operated with the blues. He lived with the blues. And I wonder if you know anybody like that, if you know people, although... Eeyore is a fictional character. Uh, many of us in some way, shape or form reflect on the things that go on within ourselves. We, Eeyore doesn't feel good about himself. Eeyore believes that his situation in life is just going to be humdrum and it isn't going to get much better. But he deals with it and in the way he knows how and it just keeps him down. He is anxious that he's always going to lose something, that something's going to be taken away from him um, in a moment's notice. And he doesn't have an optimistic look. He's not very optimistic on things and he can't see hope. He doesn't see possibility. He doesn't see things happening for him in his moment. Um, and he can't even really focus too long on the things that make him happy, like the pink ribbon on his tail. Uh, he doesn't seem to enjoy them for a very long time. Uh, Eeyore is what we would consider to be depressed. Eeyore would be, have the blues. He would be depressed. And I wonder if anybody knows that these moments or those times sound familiar when sometimes it feels like you have an Eeyore on you, where it just feels like you kind of humdrum and you have the blues. Well, the blues, or otherwise known as depression, is a condition that negatively affects how we feel, the way we think and how we act. It affects all of that. Depression can cause feelings of sadness, and it can cause feelings of loss of interest. It can We can take our desire from us. It can steal our drive from us. The things that we once enjoyed, the things that we like to do, all of a sudden, we don't have interest in them anymore. There's several layers to depression. There's several different kinds of layers to depression, and it is the most common condition when we talk about the mental health era and to talk about what mental health means for many of us. 
at any point, all of us, any of us can be depressed. I want to start off with that. At any moment, any of us can have seasons or moments when we feel depressed. Uh, we can be depressed behind certain issues and circumstances that we find ourselves in. We can find ourselves in perpetual states of sadness, just continual sadness and situations. And there are other times even where we can find ourselves caught up in what's a biological, a chemical balance of our brain and what our brain deposits. And we can find ourselves feeling in a constant sense of loss. And for many of us, particularly in the African-American community, depression is not mentioned, it's not spoken about, even though it's one of the most common things that people deal with. It's simply looked at as a season. Oh, this is your season of, of sadness. This is your dark night of the soul. They love to talk about that one, the dark night of the soul, or you just having a blues spell. You just having a spell of sadness. You just living in the blues. And it's not considered to be anything significant or anything to be taken seriously uh, because the truth of the matter is we chalk it up like everybody got trouble, right? Everybody's got hangups. Everybody's got an issue. Everybody's got something that they have to deal with, right? Everybody's got their something. And people can overlook and look past the depressive mood as just a bad time. And as people who talk about fate, particularly, depression is often considered fixable. Depression is just a moment that can be prayed away. It's just a moment that can be looked at overall with a word of prayer or with exercising some faith, uh, that if, if people of faith just pray, if people of faith just push through. And the reality is, my brothers and sisters, that's a very unhealthy way of dealing with moments of depression. It's a very unhealthy way of examining that because you kind of put that together like it doesn't exist. And lead, needless to say, to live with depression over a period of time can cause us to limp in the sense that it can affect everything. It affects our outlook, it affects our ability to function, it affects our ability to move forward, it affects our ability to complete tasks, it affects our ability to have joy, to enjoy ourselves. And so we need to be clear tonight. If you don't hear anything that I'm saying tonight, I want you to hear this first and foremost. People who love God can deal with being depressed. People who love God can go through bouts of disappointment and depression. People who love God can deal with situations where they feel like not, there is no hope and there is nothing that you can do about it. There, it, it is nothing wrong with you. If you feel like you have moments where you just can't do it or nothing is happening or nothing is going your way, there is nothing uh, wrong with having those moments and those seasons. What we want to make sure is that you don't live in places of depression. What we want to make sure is that you don't live with depression in that way to, to hinder you from operating in the places that God wants you to operate. If you have those kinds of, of, of symptoms, if you have those kinds of feelings where you feel that you can't do anything or you can't make it or nothing is working or nothing is going to work for you or there's no kind of help longer, than what the professionals say is about two or three weeks, then you probably need to examine um, your depression level. You probably need to examine what that means to be depressed. In fact, the truth of the matter is what we don't talk about because we talk about faith as this overcoming, conquering situation. What we don't talk about is that there are examples of people who are depressed in the sacred text. There are examples of people who are depressed in the Bible. And people uh, who are going through and people who feel like ultimately they have no hope and they have no help and there's no bright side coming for them. There are those examples in the biblical text and we're going to take a look at those tonight and see um, how we approach those and what that means. Uh, so if you can, I want you to write down, I want you to open your Bibles or write down for later. Psalm 88. I want you to write down Psalm 88. Um, and we're going to go through Psalm 88. We're going to look at a couple of other things. But Psalm 88 is going to be our scriptural focus for tonight. Psalm 88 um, says, Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night, I cry out to you. My prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with trouble and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down in the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more. 
who are cut off from your care. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all of your waves. You have taken from me my closest friends. You have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. I call on you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show wonders to the dead? Do, your, do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave, your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known to the place of darkness or your righteous deeds in the land of oblivion? But I cry to help for you, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my mouth, I have suffered, been close to death. I have borne your terrors and I am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me all day long. They surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me and you have taken my friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Does that sound like somebody who is, has the blues? Does that sound like somebody who is living in a place of depression? The name is Heman, H-E-M-A-N, Heman. Heman is the writer of that particular song. And Heman is a name that you've heard very little of if you've heard it at all. It is believed by some scholars that Haman is one of the three Levites assigned by King David to be the minister of music. Haman was a grandson of Samuel, they believe, uh, the prophet. And Haman is in a situation that has him depressed. It doesn't say what the situation is. It doesn't say what's going on. But depression has taken him over. His blues has gotten the best of him. Whatever the circumstance is in his life, Haman believes that God has forgotten him. And because God has forgotten him, he, he believes he's got no optimism. Some of the words that he uses, he says, you reject me and hide your face from me. I have been born of terror and despair. He says, the wrath of you has swept over me. And all day long, it feels like I'm surrounded by a flood. Those of you who have experienced depression, those of you who have had the blues, you understand that it feels like you're moving in a fog, you're moving in a constant flood. It seems like you're underwater, that you can't move. That is exactly what Haman is talking about. And we need to understand that depression is different from common sadness or grief. We're not talking about just being sad. We're not talking about just grieving. The death of a loved one, the loss of a job or the ending of a relationship, they're all difficult experiences for a person to endure. That it is normal for feelings of sadness and grief to develop um, and response to such situations is natural. To have sadness when we lose loved ones, to have sadness when a season is over, to have sadness when situations are done. I have a good friend of mine who just sold his house and he was like, man, there's something about this. There's something about moving on from this and selling this house. He said, I'm, I have a certain sense of sadness about it. And the reality is when you invest certain things, when you invest your time, when you invest your energy and things shift and things move, it can bring us to places where we feel low. It brings us to places where we can feel sad. That's normal because we're experiencing a sense of separation. Those experiences of loss might often be described or thought about being depressed, but being sad is not the same as being depressed and having depression. The grieving process is natural. It's unique to each individual. Some people grieve slower. Some people grieve faster. Some people get over things quicker. Some people, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, but it's unique to all of us. And But all of us have some of the same features of what it is to be depressed and have the blues. But grief and depression may involve intense sadness and withdrawal from usual activities. Being sad and continuing to function is one thing, but having the blues and being depressed and withdrawing and taking yourself out of situations is something else. It's something different to just say, oh yeah, I had a bad situation. Yeah, I lost my, my good friend. I lost my mother. I lost my father. I lost my job. My relationship is broke. I'm going through divorce. Those kinds of things happen, right? But we continue to function. We continue to move forward. But when we start to withdraw, when we start to move away from the things we usually do, that's usually a sign of depression. They are also different in important ways. In grief, 
painful feelings come in waves, right? When we're grieving, painful feelings come and go. They're often mixed with the positive memories, the good memories that we have of the person who, who is deceased or gone away. In major depression, uh, the mood and the interest or the pleasure of things is decreased most of the time. And it gets de 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 decreased for a longer period of time. Like I said, about two or three weeks, that's perpetual. In grief, self-esteem is usually maintained, right? So I'm sad, but I still, I'm, I'm still operating. I still feel good about myself. There's still a sense of optimism. In major depression, a feeling of worthlessness, a feeling of self-loathing, a feeling of not being good enough, those things are common. In grief, thoughts of death may surface when we fantasize about joining a loved one. You know, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna go on without them, right? There's a sense of death in those moments. But in major depression, those thoughts are focused on ending one life due to a feeling of feeling worthless or undeserving of living and being able to cope with that pain of depression. So they're different. Being sad and dealing with grief is different from being in a perpetual state of depression and having the blues. What captures us through the entire Psalm of ha is Haman's outlook. Look at Psalm 88 when you get a chance. Look at it and study it. Read it. Pay attention to the words that Haman is using. His outlook is dim. His outlook does not have any hope in it. Even though he mentions God, he still does not have any hope in his perspective. Things as he sees them look bleak. He doesn't seem to have a positive perspective about anything. And one of the places of depression that is most serious is when people feel separated from hope. That is one of the things that is dangerous. When people feel separated from hope, when people feel like there's nothing hopeful around them, when people feel like there's no good news, one of the greatest indicators of, the kind of, of this kind of depression is when people feel separated from God. That even when you talk about God and even when you talk about possibility and even when you talk about hope, that even though Haman speaks of God, he feels like God has, is not with him. He feels like God has abandoned him. Depression symptoms can vary from mild to severe. They can vary from, from mild depression to very severe depression and clinical depression, right? So we can go from the blues to having a real clinical situation. All right. So they, the, the symptoms of depression include feeling sad or having a depressed mood constantly, a loss of interest or a loss of pleasure in things that you once had a good time or enjoyed doing. So if you had some stuff you like to do and now you don't like to do it anymore, that could be an indicator. Changes in your appetite, changes in your appetite, weight loss or weight gain. Um, unrelated to dieting, weight loss or weight gain, either way, unrelated to diet. I'm not on a diet. You just lose the weight or you gain in weight. You're just overeating. Trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, a loss of energy or increased fatigue. You're tired all the time. You feel like you need to sleep all the time. The increase of purpose, less physical activity, right? So I have the inability to sit still. I pace. I wring my hands a lot you know, or, or slowed movements of speech, right? All of these should be seen by other people, right? You seem jittery, you seem uneasy, you seem like you can't keep still, right? Feeling worthless or guilty, difficulty thinking, difficulty keeping thoughts in your head, difficulty concentrating, difficulty making decisions, and thoughts of death or even thoughts of suicide. So those are some of the things that um, are indicators that people might be dealing with a, a more severe level of depression. There are several types of depression, and they emerge from different types of situations. And as we mentioned, some depression is situational. Some stuff is situational, some stuff that we experience. Circumstances that we're facing, stuff that we go through can make us and keep us in low places, and we don't see any hope in the situation or what can happen. But it can put us, if we're not careful, it can put us in a perpetual state of darkness, all right? Look at Job, write down, write down Job chapter three, verses 11 through 19. Job chapter three, verses 11 through 19. And we all know Job's situation, right? So it's, Job says, why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me and breasts that I might be nursed? 
For now, I would be lying in peace. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and rulers of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruins. With princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or oh, why was I not hidden away in the ground like a stillborn child? like an infant who never saw the light of day. There are wicked cease from turmoil and they are weary at rest. Captives also enjoy their ease. They no longer hear the slave driver shout. The small and the great are there and the slaves and free from their owners. Job wishes that he were never born. When he loses everything, when he loses his possessions, when he loses his family, when he loses his children, when he finds himself afflicted with sickness, Job says, you know what? It would be better that if I was not born at all. His depression comes from the situation where he's in, that he's in, where he lost everything. We know Job's situation. The depression from circumstances can have us wondering if there's any good in the world and if there's any good around us. And if there's any good that can come to us. And one of the things that we do when circumstances start to happen to us, we start to believe that we're cursed. We start to believe that somehow or another we are being punished. We start to believe that somehow or another God is doing this to us. And we find ourselves in those places that we are undeserving. There's also depression that stems from a situation that we seem not to be able to get out of. Something that seems to be long term. Conditions that we live with has false, false, forced us to come to some kind of resolve um, that it's going to forever be that way. But we're in a situation so long where we just like, yo, it just is what it is. Eeyore is resolved that his tail is pinned to him, uh, on him and not real. And because of that, he's in a depressed state. He doesn't want his tail to be pinned. He wish he had a real tail. But, and he's always a fearful that it's going to be removed. So as a result of it, he just cannot find happiness. He's constantly dealing, here's another thing, with anxiety. Anxiety is often connected to depression because we, they, they mix together and we feel somehow or another we're going to lose something. Something's going to be taken away from us, that something's going to go wrong at any given moment. The idea is with this kind of depression, if I just didn't have this, if I just didn't have this, how many times have we done that in our lives? If I just didn't have this, if, if I just had this situation, if this was okay, if this would just work, if this would just happen, I believe everything would be all right. And the reality is many times that's not the case because there'll be in something else. There'll be another challenge. There'll be another issue. There'll be some, another mountain to overcome. It's just that feeling that this issue is not dealt with brings us to a place of having the blues. First Samuel chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. First Samuel, chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, says, this went on year after year. Remember Hannah? When Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. And her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? You remember Hannah, don't you? Hannah had her sister wife, Penina. Hannah's sister wife, Penina had children and Hannah had none. And Hannah was depressed. Hannah, her situation just would not change and she was depressed. Hannah, because she can't have the one thing in the world she believes will bring her joy, a child. Hannah is not only not able to conceive, but she's also antagonized by Penina. To make matters worse, Elkanah, her husband, would try to get her to snap out of it. Elkanah just thought it was a thing. She just needs to snap out of it by thinking her feelings were not that serious, that her issue was not that real. Those of us who do not understand people who have the blues, those who do not understand people who operate in places of depression, we will, we will minimize what they're going through and think it's just a season. Just snap out of it. Just change your mind. People who are depressed cannot simply snap out of it. You need to know that. People who are dealing with the blues in a serious place, they just can't snap out of it. They can't simply change their minds, especially if the mood is based on a chemical issue of the brain. They just can't snap out of it. Oftentimes because of our sense of unawareness when it comes to, to having the blues and being depressed, we can hyper-spiritualize it. 
right? We think a lot of times the depressive mood is just the spirit. It's a spirit that needs to be exercised out. It's a spirit that just needs to be prayed. It's just the spirit that just needs to be delivered from. And although there is nothing wrong with prayer and many people dealing with um, depression uh, need more than just a prayer and a confirmation that God is working with them. A lot of times it's more than just saying God is going to work this out. What can happen if we are insensitive to people's depression is we can actually make them feel guilty about how they feel. Come on, what's wrong with you? Get yourself together. Come on, what's wrong with you? Get yourself together. Why are you always doing this? Why are you always the one? You always doing this. Why are you always acting like this? Every time we come together, this is what you're doing, right? We make people feel guilty about how they feel. And people can tell things, people tell them things like, well, you don't have no, you don't have no faith. You don't trust God. You don't believe God for it. Or they don't think God can work things out. You don't think God can work things out for you. You don't think God can do it. Causing people to suffer with their depression in silence and shame. So instead of sharing that I feel this, what I do is I keep it to myself because I don't want to be judged by people who think I can't handle it. One of the most terrible things in the African-American community we do, particularly when we're talking about uh, mental health issues is we like to tell people, or we like to, we, we have generalized this assumption that if you're dealing with something and you have to tell somebody, it means you can't cope or you can't handle it, or you can't manage it. And what it means simply, because we are human, because we are in the family of connection and relationship, it just means sometimes that we need help finding our way. It just means that we need some help finding some direction and some insight. Sometimes when you stay in something so long and too long, you don't know how to come out of it. And so we need other opinions. We need different perspectives to help us emerge from different situations. Another type of depressive mood is when we have a perpetual dark mood, you know, people who are perpetually um, dark. Some people use the term moody. Are you just moody, right? And many activities can be unpleasurable. Many activities are unenjoyable and your mood begins to change in your function. Jeremiah, I think, is like that. Jeremiah chapter 20. Look at Jeremiah chapter 20. Write it down. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 14 and 18. Jeremiah says this starts off almost like Job. Cursed be the day I was born. May the day my mother bore me not be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought my father the news, who made him very glad, saying, a child is born to you, a son. May that man be like the towns the Lord overthrew without pity. May he hear wailing and mourning, a battle cry at noon. For he did not kill me in the womb with my mother as my grave, her womb enlarged forever. Why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to my end my days in shame? Listen, Jeremiah is the poster boy for depression. Jeremiah is the poster boy for depression. Jeremiah has earned the nickname by scholars and preachers as the weeping prophet. He is, he, is he is considered the weeping prophet. And somebody just didn't want to say, Jeremiah, that boy is depressed. Jeremiah is unhappy almost from the beginning of his story. Jeremiah is upset and depressed about everything. Everything makes Jeremiah say. He's upset that God called him to the work. Because remember, he wanted to quit, right? Remember, he wanted to quit, but he said he couldn't quit. It was like fire shut up in his bones. Jeremiah was upset about the work. He was upset that the people weren't listening to him. He was upset that God didn't punish the people when he wanted them to. He was upset that when God did punish the people, Jeremiah was unhappy with it all. He was unhappy with the whole thing. So much to the point, Jeremiah was so unhappy that they actually have another book of his complaints, the book of Lamentations. Read Lamentations if you don't believe me. Jeremiah was unhappy. He was depressed. And just so you don't think depression happened in the Old Testament, just because you don't think the depression and the blues was an Old Testament thing, Paul got depressed every once in a while too. Yes, our beloved Paul, our faithful Paul, the Paul that so many people admire and may are, are impressed by his courage and thank God for him being one of the progenitors of the early church. Paul got depressed. Don't believe me? Second Corinthians chapter one. 
Second Corinthians chapter one, verse eight says, we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia, but we are under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired of life itself. Paul said things got so bad that we didn't think we was going to make it. Things got so bad that life wasn't worth living. That's what it is to have the blues. That's what it is to be in a state of depression. Paul said that things got so bad, it was far beyond our ability to handle it. We couldn't handle it. We were so depressed, we could not manage it. Paul says there's been suffering more than they had the ability to control. It caused them to despair the very life that they were living. And so you need to know that several factors play a role in, in our depression. Several factors play a role. So one is chemistry. One is your biochemistry. Differences in certain chemicals in the brain can contribute to systems of depression. So your biochemistry, your, chemi your chemical balance can deal with, can cause depression. Your genetics. It is believed that some people are biologically predisposed, your genes, uh, people, I, uh, for example, if one identical twin has depression, the other has a 70% chance of having the illness sometime in life. Personality, your personality, people with low self-esteem, people who get easily overwhelmed by stress, people who are generally pessimistic, people who have a dark outlook on life appear to be more likely to experience depression. Then there's the environment, continuous exposure to violence, continuous exposure to neglect, abuse of uh, pro uh, poverty that makes some people more vulnerable than others to depression. All right. So there are a lot of different factors. There are a lot of different things that you have to consider as to what some of the causes are of depression. All right. So some of us, they deal with major depression. All right. Not all of us, but some of us deal with what's called major depression. This is what is looked at as the classic depression type. Uh, major depression is a state where a dark mood is just all consuming. It consumes you. The major depression is you living in the dark, just got the lights on, lights off all the time. Sheet cover over your head. Right. Lost of interest in everything. Don't want to go outside. Don't want to wash. Don't want to eat. Don't want to do anything. And anything that you used to do, you don't like to do it. Symptoms of this type of depression include trouble sleeping, changes in appetite, like we said, weight loss, weight gain, loss of energy, feeling of worthlessness, saw thoughts of death, thoughts of suicide. If the world would be better if I wasn't here, the world would be better if I wasn't involved, the world would be better if this, the world would be better. I'm a problem. This is my issue. I'm not, I'm no good. All right. That's major depression. Persistent depression disorder. That's some. That's what somebody would would constantly would almost like have the blues, right? It refers to a low mood, like your mood is low, that has lasted for about two years. They say it's about two years long, but it may not reach the intensity of major depression. People with perpetual depressive disorder are able to function day to day. They function. They get around but they feel low, they feel joyless much of the time. Other depressive symptoms can include appetite, sleep, low energy, low self-esteem. A lot of times, low self-esteem and a sense of hopelessness, All right? Eeyore fits that bill. Eeyore fits that bill. Eeyore is perpetually depressed. Then you have something a little bit more clinical um, called bipolar disorder. And people with bipolar uh, have episodes of depression. They can be high one moment, real intense, real high, and then they can be incredibly low and crash the next. They go through periods of mad high energy where they're really functioning they're all over the place. They're, Yo, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then they can shoot down to a really major depressive symptoms. They can have grandiose ideas. I, look, I want to build, we'll build a house, want to build a wall want to have all these grandiose ideas, right? Unrealistically high self-esteem, right? I can do anything. I can do it all. I'm unstoppable, right? And then they don't sleep. I got to, I can't sleep. I don't have to sleep. I'm always moving, right? And in their thoughts of acti activity, they operate in a high speed. They're always moving. They're always thinking. And they got a ramped up understanding of pleasure, including sex sprees, right? They have overspending, risk-taking, 
being manic can feel great. It feels like you're on top of the world, but it doesn't last long. That's the issue. It doesn't last long. And it can lead to self-destructive behavior. And then it's usually followed by a major crash and a feeling of depression. Anybody seen Misery? Anybody seen the movie Misery? We see the movie Misery and Annie. Annie was a manic, right? Annie could be excited one moment and then one moment Annie just be messed up, right? And it could be all over the place. She could talk about this and this, that third, misery and misery and misery. Talk about the book, talk about Paul, talk about all that kind of stuff. And then the next moment she'd be down and there was no, no hope, right? She'd walk around with a pistol talking about she want to end it all. That's manic. That's a good, that's a good example of a manic. And then there are those who deal with what's called SAD, seasonal affective disorder. This type comes from days being shorter, right? Right around now, right around now. The time goes back, days get shorter, dealing in the dark, uh, mood changes from a result of alteration of the body's rhythm and things of that nature. Um, and around seasonal affective disorder, uh, it also is, it can be exacerbated by the holidays. It can also be amped up by the holidays. So not only is it about, well, the days are getting shorter, it's getting darker and things of that nature mess with me, right? So I got sensitivity uh, to darkness and the darkness puts me down in the dumps, but also around the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Rosh Hashanah, those kinds of things. If their loved ones who are gone or departed or who left and things of that nature, then I can be affected by seasonal affective disorder, right? I miss this person. The holidays reminds me of this. The holidays remind me of this person. The holidays remind me of that. And I operate in those particular places. Depression can get to a point where it can affect our physical health as well. We have to be careful. The mind is a powerful muscle. The mind is a powerful muscle and like all muscles, when it's injured, it can affect the rest of the body, all right? Psalm 38, Psalm 38, uh, verses six through 11, write that down. Psalm 38, verses six through 11 says, I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long, I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds. My strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and compassions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay away. David is ex experiencing a period of depression. And he's experiencing depression in his mind, but it's affecting his body. And watch this. Not only is it affecting his body, but it's affecting the people around him. What does he say in verse 11? He says, my friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds and my neighbors stay away. He said, I'm in this place. I'm in this perpetual place to, to the people around me don't want to deal. They can see the state that I'm in. And so they avoid me. He's, his body is being affected by his outlook and his condition is getting worse. And so physical effects of depression can be stomach aches. We can deal with cramps. We can have constipation, we, malnutrition because we're not eating, high blood pressure, hypertension, and even suicide. So let's talk about real quick some things and I'm gonna let you go. Let's talk about some things you can deal with um, if you are dealing with the blues and you have certain levels of depression, because here's the good news. And you know me, I'm all about the good news. I'm all about the hope. That's what we do. The hope is, and the good news is, is that depression is always treatable. It's treatable and you can treat it and you can do something with it. it you just have to make the decision to be able to do something with it. First thing you want to do is if your depression is that bad, if it is that severe, if it is more than just the blues, if you feel like it is more than just the blues, then what you want to do is you want to talk to a therapist. Yep. Talk to a therapist. Psychotherapy will focus on helping people adjust their lifestyles in ways that are possible. It gives you a different outlook. It doesn't mean that, you know, you are hopeless. It doesn't mean that you have a major problem. It just means that you need help processing this thing. Don't be afraid to talk through certain things. And if it ends up that you need a medication, don't run from that. 
if it helps you be more productive, if it helps you be more active, if it helps you be more alert, don't look at it in that way. You've heard me say it before. You wouldn't vilify somebody who had diabetes. You wouldn't vilify somebody who had hypertension because it's in their family through her, her, um, heredity, through, through their genes. You wouldn't vilify them for having a medical condition. Clinical depression can be, is a medical condition. And if a therapist or a counselor says that you need medication, then you need to talk to somebody about doing that. And when I say a therapist, I mean a therapist. All due respect, all due respect to my preacher clergy friends. They are not therapists. Some of them may be counselors, but they are not therapists. I am working towards becoming a licensed therapist. Right, So I'm going to be a unique animal. I'm going to be a clergy person and a therapist. I'm going to be a unique animal. I'm going to be an interesting unicorn. But everybody doesn't do that. Everybody's not going to do that. So you need to see a therapist. You need to see somebody who is trained in understanding these symptoms and talking about what your options are. So you need to understand among these issues what you can address together, what you can work on, and how you can improve, improve your self-esteem, switch from negative to positive thinking, and practice stress management, how you do that. So one of the things you can do is talk with a therapist. Another thing you can do is express yourself in writing. Write it out. Write how you feel. Writing in a journal is great therapy and it can help you manage your depression. You can re relieve stress by being open about your thoughts. Even if you don't want to tell anybody else, journal, write. Write about your thoughts. Write about your feelings and your concerns in your writing. Be totally honest in your own journal. Be totally honest about it. Writing down your feelings can release some pent-up emotions that you have. And then one of the things that you can do when you do that, when you write, if you save your journals, is look back on them. And you can see where you are and where you've been. And a lot of times when I tell people to do that, when I'm doing counseling sessions and I tell people to write stuff down and they look back on it, they say, wow, I made that, I made that situation seem like it was the end of the world. And when I look at it now, it was just a, it was just a moment. I can't believe that I, that I put that much energy and that much effort into that. So you can look at things differently. You can see things in a different way. So write, write down, log, get a journal. Another thing you can do is boost your self-image, right? People with, who struggle with the blues, people who struggle with a sense of depression often experience low self-esteem. So finding ways to better yourself is an important aspect of, of, of improving your perspective. Practice positive thinking by focusing your thoughts on the best qualities about yourself. I know how you feel about the moment. I know how you feel about what's happening. I know how you feel about what took place. I know how you feel about the event, but there are some good things about you. There's some good things about you. That's what makes you so wonderful. That's what makes you so unique. That's what makes you so created and wonderful in the presence of God. No, you can't do everything. No, you can't have everything. A lot of times when we get depressed, we operate, we come into our places of depression with an all or nothing mindset. It's got to be all of it or it's got to be nothing. And the reality is, is that there are degrees. There are degrees of that, that every time you're not going to win every time. You're not going to lose every time. I think I shared with you one of my favorite quotes that Tim Duncan, the basketball player, Hall of Fame basketball player, played for the San Antonio Spurs. He said one time, he said his father used to say to him, you're never as good as your best game and you're never as bad as your worst. Understand that there are different variables in life and different understanding um, that you are and possess good qualities, even when you don't function at your best. You also want to make lifestyle changes sometimes in your self image, right? Improve your self esteem, eat healthy, get regular exercise, spend time with friends who make you feel good about who you are. All right. So boost your self image, do things to change your perspective, stick to a schedule. Maintaining a healthy and regular routine is very helpful for people who had the blues. Many times with depression, people's motivation drops, right? Making them feel unproductive and fueling feelings of low self-esteem. So make sure you schedule activities. Make sure you, you put your stuff together and down on what you have to do. Stuff that you have to do every day. 
and make it stuff that you enjoy doing, make it stuff that gratifies you, make it stuff that gives you a sense of accomplishment about yourself and aim for a healthy balance in your life. We have a new word, we have a, a new phrase for this in, in word in the world of professionalism. We call it self-care. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you do things that encourage yourself. Make sure that you do things uh, that bring a sense of accomplishment or make you feel good about yourself. So create a schedule and stick to it. Another thing you can do is stay involved, stay engaged. We told, we told you before that depression causes us to withdraw, causes us to sometimes in major cases, causes us to, to, to hide out and withdraw and step back. But if you're experiencing that, you may feel like you wanna withdraw socially and keep yourself out of certain situations. Right, that's what that's what the esteem does to us. That's what the depression does. But social connections can actually help us keep us from going into a downward spiral. So you want to not become isolated. You don't want to become isolated. You don't want to be alone with your thoughts. Go to the movies, share a brisk walk, catch up with a close friend, do something to lift your spirits so you don't live in those particular places. Here's one. Get sleep, sleep well, get plenty of rest, right? Every night is a must of good sleep if you wanna keep a good mood. People who suffer with the blues often have noticeable sleep disturbances. They either sleep too much or they don't sleep enough. So go to bed and wake up with a regular schedule, regiment yourself, don't skimp on your sleep. Feeling run down will only exacerbate the symptoms of depression that you have and make it more difficult. It'll make it more difficult for you to be social or to make it more difficult for you to engage and get exercise and manage your stress. All right. Take, engage in the emotional benefits of exercise. Okay. Um, Offer physical exercise is helpful just in general. It helps your body, helps your joints, helps your blood flow, helps your blood pressure, it helps your mind. When you exercise, your mind actually gets fed, fed. The electrodes in your mind actually go off when you exercise. They actually send signals to your brain. Endorphins go to your brain. Certain things happen when you exercise. Physical activities help to relieve stress and make you feel great. There's a reason why therapists and people say go back to a boxing class or punch a pillow or there's some people who go to the shoot range and shoot pistols and marksman's classes and stuff like that. People who take martial arts and things of those natures because exercise and stress relief is good for the body, is good for the brain. The satisfaction you get from finishing a workout is going to be helpful, it can make you feel good to boost your self-esteem and then also make you healthy and keep you physically fit. And last but not least, and this is important, this is important, make food and mood connections. Connect your food and your mood, right? Your mood is directed, connected to what you eat. Diet and nutrition are very important. Some studies have shown that a higher daily intake of omega-3s what you get in salmon and fish oil supplements can improve your mood. There are many connections between elements of diet and good nutrition. Eating a healthy diet can make you feel healthy. It makes you feel fit, makes you feel like you look good, makes you feel attractive, which is all it does boost your self-esteem. So while feeling unhealthy can worsen depression and play into a negative self-perception of yourself. So you wanna make sure that you stay positive. You wanna make sure that you stay engaged. You ever eat something, you say, man, it looks good, man, it's a lot of it. You, want, you go ahead and eat it and then you feel lousy, <laughs> right? You ever eat something, right? And feel lousy, right? Because, you, because it affects your body, it weighs you down. And the ways you can be supportive, that's a good question. How can we be supportive of somebody who's dealing with depression? The ways that we can be supportive is not, first of all, not to shame them. Do not shame them and tell them that they just need to snap out of it. You want to be supportive. You want to, you want to encourage them to talk to somebody. You want to hear what they're saying. Hear what they're depressed about. Hear what's going on and let them know. You want to be remind, you want to remind them that, that there are good qualities about them. You want to remind them that there is hope. 
part of us as people of faith is we ought to have some level and some place where we can articulate hope, where we, where we, we can articulate what it means to be hopeful. So while you're doing all those things, you want to be hopeful. You want to talk about what hope looks like. You want to talk about what hope does for you. You want to talk about how um, hope, you know, can help us hold on. And even though folks sometimes lose their way in that, you still want to point them to the possibilities that are in front of them. And you want to be honest. If there's a situation that people can't deal with, if there's a situation where it seems that they're just not coming out, of that just seems that they're just not moving uh, and evolving from those particular places, then you want to be honest and say, hey, maybe you need to talk to somebody. Maybe you want to engage in some conversation. Maybe you want to talk to a therapist. Maybe somebody can tell you or show you or direct you to a place that you, that you can find some sense of peace. The question is, do you want to be better? Do you want to be well, right? Because some folks can feel just like Eeyore, that it's their lot in life, that they're just supposed to be depressed, that this is just what's supposed to happen. But we can describe and we can let people know uh, that, that there are things that they can do. See, part of the issue with depression is folks don't think that they can do anything, right? Part of the, part of the issue with depression is folks feel like there is no hope, there is no out, right? <clears throat> and so we have to, articulate if as we as friends and as people who care about people that there is a hope part of part of judas's tragedy part of the tragedy of judas is not that he committed suicide part of the tragedy of judas is that he didn't hold on long enough to see what sunday morning would bring part of judas's issue is that he gave up too soon and nobody told him that there was possibility in God. That there was there was something, and you know, and it's and it's you know tricky because who would know what was going to happen? Nobody knew at the time what was going to happen. We got 2020 vision, but now that we have it, we ought to articulate it. That even in your places of crucifixion. Even in your lowest places, isn't that what the cross is all about? Even in your lowest places, God still has possibility. That even in your places when you feel like there is no hope, God says there's still something else. There's still another move. God still has option. And God can still make a way. And so our assignment is to let people know that there is a Sunday morning that there is a resurrection. Now, there may be some stuff you have to do to get to that resurrection morning. Maybe some stuff you have to do to get to that good news, place of good news. Might have to go see a therapist. Might have to change your diet. Might have to change some of the people in your life. Might have to change some things. May have to take some medication to balance you out because it's just a natural chemical issue that you have to deal with. Maybe a whole lot of things that you have to do, but there is a Sunday morning. There's a hope, there's a resurrection that comes with that. And so the hope for all of us is that even in our places of blues or deep depression, we might be reminded that God still gives us possibility. That even though we live with the blues, or we live with depression from time to time, or we live in some situations where we are constantly depressed. We still have hope and we still have option to change and to transform. It is treatable. You can do something about it. It is not hopeless. You are not hopeless. And I hope that's a word for somebody tonight. I really do. Because I knew if, I'm, if I can be transparent for these next two minutes, I knew this was gonna be touchy. And I knew that a whole lot of people weren't going to be excited about this, but I hope that those who needed to hear it can hear it. And I hope that those who operate in places where they feel hopeless can understand that God is still operating and there's still a resurrection. There's still a hope for you. There's still a possibility for you. We all know people who have had the blues if not ourselves. We've all known people who have been in seasons where they've been depressed. 
but our assignment is to make sure that we can be as supportive as we can and we can get them the help that they can. And we can help to, to remind them as people of faith that God does have a resurrection morning for them. So I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope this helped you out. I hope this was informative at the very least. Um, and again, uh, if you need to watch this again, you need to see it, uh, it will be posted on Facebook Live uh, uh, for you to give it, or to share it, or to send it to somebody, uh, to tag somebody so they can see it and they can be helped in it. Um, but we are excited about what God has for you and what God is doing with you. And we hope and pray that transformation is on your way. So don't feel bad about your condition. Everybody has one of them. Don't feel bad about having the blues. We've all been there. Don't feel bad about even feeling hopeless. It happens to the best of us. And it does not mean you are being punished. It does not mean you're not faithful enough. It does not mean you are not good enough. It means something in regards to how you perceive and how you understand the world. But there's hope for you and there's hope for all of us in this journey. And so my prayer is, is that God would continue to bless you, that God would continue to watch over you, and God would continue to reveal to you the possibilities that are in front of you. So if there are prayers for tonight, you can post those, you can lift those up, because we want to pray tonight. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for all of us and pray that God would lift us from the fog, from the darkness, from the dark nights of our soul, uh, that we would be made whole and we would be better. So if you have any prayers or any concerns, you want to do that, please do that. Our, our brother, Sean Banks, um, has lost his mom. Um, and we want to uh, pray for him and his family. Uh, services will be at New Calvary on Monday at 11 a.m. Uh, and we uh, pray for, again, we pray for him. Uh, we pray for others who are sharing feelings of loss uh, in this moment. Uh, and we pray for those who are just going through the regular rigmarole of life, uh, that God will continue to grant peace and understanding. So let us look to the Lord in a word of prayer as we depart. God, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for all of it. Thank you for the mountains as well as the valleys. Thank you for the challenges uh, as well as the triumphs. Because overall, God, it helps us to understand and realize that you are still working things out. That in those places of crucible, you have shown us, God, who you are. And so we ask right now that you would just be a blessing to us. I pray, God, that those who wrestle and those who struggle with the blues, those who struggle with depression, no matter how mild or how severe, that you would help them find their way. Help them, God, to open their hearts and their minds that they would see possibility. Help them to move to their places of resurrection. Help them find their Sunday morning to where they would not be afraid to say they need help, afraid to say they need guidance or afraid to hear a helpful ear and a voice that is encouraging. God, we pray for the New Calvary family. We pray for our friends who share with us on tonight. And we pray that you will watch over all of us and just continue to keep us. Strengthen us, God, to do what you called us to do. Let us understand our purpose. But most of all, God, we pray tonight that you would give us peace. That we would, even in the world of turmoil we live in, find a peace that rests in you. And so help us to navigate the waters. Help us to find our way. Help us to be honest. Help us to tell the truth. Help us to let those things be revealed that in all things we would give you glory. We would give you honor and we would give you praise. 
We thank you for being God, as the saints say, all by yourself. And we thank you for allowing us to experience your majesty. It is in all things that we give you glory. And in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen and amen. God bless you. We look forward to sharing with you and see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. as we share and as we continue uh, to pick up your feelings. We're going to continue to pick up your feelings. We're going to talk about I'm feeling some type of way. Yeah, you got me feeling some type of way. We're going to talk about how we wrestle with our feelings and some type of way of being in the letdown. We love you. You can't do anything about it. And we pray for God's goodness and mercy to fall upon you. Next week, uh, before Christmas, stop of Christmas, <laughs> I'm rushing, right? Next week before Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving, we are going to talk about, we're going to wrap this thing up and we're going to talk about living with the limp of fear. Oh my God, why am I so afraid? We're going to talk about being afraid and living with the limp of fear next week. And then the following week, uh, we're going to have a recorded uh, um, worship experience for our pre-Thanksgiving service. Uh, we are putting that together for you and we're going to worship and share. Uh, so we want you to tune into that as well. But next week, we're going to wrap up and close our uh, Living with a Lent Bible study series. We hope you've enjoyed it and that God will continue to smile upon you. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Y'all be good. Peace and soul. Y'all be good. Later.